I love it. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> so I was talking, I made an example about the nitrogen. Yes. And nitrogen, it's not like it's always there. We add a lot of nitrogen, right? But it's not always there in the rates that you need it at the time of plant uptake. So it, it requires us to supplement it. Mm -hmm. So then this draws me into calcium. Uh, calcium is, is a pain in the butt. Uh, and so I, I, I'm more like a global agronomist where you're a very, you, you laser point this area, you know, yeah. you're, you know, everything about this environment. So in my travels all over the place, I, I can only name maybe on one hand, uh, maybe five or 10 places that I've been that actually didn't have calcium. So most environments are just yeah. completely saturated with calcium. When you say that, you mean present in the soil? Well, just in the environment. So yeah, in the soil. Okay. In the soil. Gotcha. But now all of these places, if we start doing different tests and you know tissue testing, sap testing, we're we're not finding enough calcium. So calcium is an issue that it's barely mobile. It doesn't like to move around. So even though I'm testing extremely high levels of calcium mm -hmm. in most places I travel, sometimes even in the irrigation water, yep. but it's, it's not in the plant in the right place at the time I need it. I so if we're going into flowering by any means, you know, you need calcium. And that almost prov always provides a, a return. And a lot of calcium has to do, calcium's a good thing to pick on because the calcium availability has a lot to do with the balance and ratio of that calcium to some of the other micronutrients that we're testing in the environment. So maybe if it's from a, from a soil test standpoint, you know, your calcium, your magnesium, your potassium, even the, the enemy, you know, sodium, all play a role in calcium availability. I can have high levels of calcium, but if my calcium to mag ratios are off or my potassium is too high, then I'll never get that calcium out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And that would require a foliar application. Yeah. Foliar applications of calcium-like products, they're really helpful in targeting and putting that micro where it needs to be in the leaves and in the flowers and in the xylem stream and phloem and all over this plant. So it can go to where it's needed in the amounts that it's needed when it's needed. Well, I think that's a lot of the uh, lack of transparency in agriculture today is that we as farmers are sold a product that said, put this on your crop and you'll see a response. And that, that's what made me think of that is if I sprayed it and I saw it in the field, I think, oh, the calcium had a response. But really, maybe it was the calcium allowed other things to then do their job. Absolutely, hundred percent. And it wasn't. And and at the end of the day, the farmer just thinks it was the calcium. Oh, absolutely. When it's like, no, no, no. What does calcium do at the flowering time? Dot dot dot. Absolutely. And and it's not always just calcium. So some of the times we'll see a boron application oh, yeah. will increase the calcium. Yes in the plant sure so just by balancing the micronutrient ratios we can I, I hate the word manipulate but we can literally cause other nutrients to be taken up and there's noticeable bad actors you've probably seen some of these bad actors in your own spray tanks but like your calcium your phosphorus your sulfur these things are all interacting mm -hmm. that molders chart if we want yeah, to go back exactly. to the past you know, another one, Von Liebig and Mulder's chart. But the Mulder's chart does not just apply to the soil. So those interactions are equally going to happen in your sap. It's about uh, a balanced portfolio of these micronutrients at the right times. When you're going into flowering, zinc, calcium, boron, uh, even molybdenum in trace amounts are very important to the flower. When you're growing leaves and stems and trying to fill canopies because you're not planting at, at a ridiculously high planting depth. You know, those, some of those divalent metals, your zinc, magnesium, manganese, uh, iron even, all of these are, are needed at high levels then in those early stages of growth. Then what when did, you're- What does divalent mean? <clears throat> oh, it has a two plus on it. Yep. It's a salt. So that's most of the micronutrients are taken into the plant as divalent ions. So it'd be calcium two plus. Uh, magnesium two plus. Johnny, it, me mediate for me, yeah, bro. I got it. Uh, so, 
<laughs> nutrients when you talk about electron transfers. Yes. Okay, so if it's a plus two, yeah. it has two to give. Correct me if I'm wrong. In terms of the charge. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. So if it's a plus two, a, a cation. Cat ion. Okay. Okay. If it's a two plus, that is stronger than a one plus. Okay. Or a three plus is even stronger okay. on its potential. Where we've talked about this previously is like with iron. Okay. Okay. A plant is able to use a two yes. plus. Sure, sure. When you get to a three plus, that plant may not be able to utilize that iron even though it's in the system. Okay. Because it's too strong. What's for the magnesium? Plant. Two plus. It's two plus. It's a two plus. So what we hear about is how magnesium just ties everything up. Um, sorry, that was just yeah. random. No, no, not I at hate all. magnesium. But like out of, out of the cat, <laughs> <laughs> I know some people need it, but man, it's the bane of my existence in a lot of my ground. <laughs> well, it's because of the overabundance of that magnesium. Yeah, right. It's a parent material it, issue. I mean, if you were at a fifteen base saturation, you wouldn't be complaining about. Correct. It. You know, right? You'd be excited. Sure. I got a field <laughs> with a thirty-six in it. Yeah, dude. It's not good. Ban that K, baby. Ban that K. Well, <laughs> K, so so this is another one too, and and I this I never I never studied this. I never took a class in this, but it's worth it if you're farming and you know your field. The the Geological Society USGS, you go right on their website, and you can start looking at the parent material of your soil, like what rocks mm -hmm. your soil came out of. So I, I was when I was still younger, I was teaching. I was going to be that famous professor and change the world that day. And I moved from the East Coast where we had really low pH soils. And I moved out to, to beautiful California like everybody else from the East Coast does. And we were trying to farm on a soil. It was called serpentine. And serpentine, you know, who knew this then, right? But serpentine, I had to look it up because, it, you know, we could never have, there was never calcium in the plants. And serpentine is the parent material. If we were going to start a mine one day, we would mine serpentine rock and we would make magnesium. And oh. Oh. we were growing on soil that was oxidized magnesium ore. And because of that, we were never able to get any calcium at all, no matter what we applied to the ground, out of the ground and into the plant. And mm. when you're in a soil like that, when your mag is just so high, you have to go to foliar applications. So just like the ocean, we're not going to change the flavor of the ocean. I didn't want to say something on, you know, on this because it's so public. But, you know, a lot of people are probably peeing in the ocean. They're not making a big difference. Right. And uh, but same thing. If you have an ocean of magnesium like you just described, mm -hmm. you're never going to get a response from soil applications of the, the calcium. You're always going to have calcium problems. You're always going to have potassium problems. So you really have to start looking into foliar applications in those fields. So like in that situation, even doing a band of K, you think it's... K is a little bit easier. Okay. Okay. So for K, we're not talking about micronutrient anymore. We're talking about yep, K... Yep. Sorry about that. My bad. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm talking about peeing in the ocean. She's talking about macronutrients. <laughs> What is this coming to? And <laughs> Where but, are we? <laughs> no, but it's okay. Uh, we are so dead. <laughs> okay. But uh, K, you are using it at relatively much higher concentrations. Okay. So, that and makes then sense. K, and also look at the, the way that the nutrient is taken up. So, for years, we've been able to cheat micronutrients because we just throw, throw enough NPK on the ground. You grow a giant root system, and you're mining the soil that much more efficiently. And, it's because uh, you have more roots. You yeah. just have more, more surface roots. area. More, yeah. yeah. And I don't want to be um, anti-soil biology. Soil biology is really cool, and it's one of my new hobbies now, and I love learning about it. But, you know, if you want to talk about a simple mechanism of why we like fungal dominant soils is because a lot of these interactions fungi are are very very important in the mobilization and movement of phosphorus so these fungi will colonize your roots and then the fungi is so much thinner than even the the root hair mm -hmm. and now you have so much more surface area we're able to mine that root zone so much more efficiently than we ever were before so there, there's on one hand, you know, with mm -hmm. the K, we're, we're mining better. K is a lot more mobile in the soil. K is going to come in more as water 
more through the xylem stream. When you get into something more like magnesium, it's a lot less mobile. Uh, it, it's taken up a lot more with some of this root interception. And it's just, it's, it's also going to affect your base saturations. But at the same time, you're going to be, it's going to be easier to push your K levels around. Okay. So guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major plat podcast platforms. Um, we're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.